Hello, boys and girls. Do you have your Bibles with you? I hope you do, and you're ready to study the Bible. And I hope you're having a good day. The sun is shining here. It's rather cold, but that sunshine it makes you just really feel good. Reese's doing well. She's not scared like she was last week with that thunderstorm. She likes that sunny weather, and I do too. And boys and girls, we're going to be talking about how we feel. You know how the sunny weather makes us feel so good inside? Well, that's a feeling that we have on the inside. It And it'll show on the outside. What we are feeling on the inside, a lot of times it just shows on the outside. Like if you're feeling fine, maybe really good, well, you've got a smile. Or you're feeling real well, you've got a real big smile and thumbs up. Then if you're tired, oh, you yawn, or you're just worn out, maybe you've been busy all day long and you're just tired, sad, oh, we don't like to feel sad, sick, oh my sick and you have to stay in, away from everybody, then angry, we have to watch that one, angry, hungry, you like to eat, thirsty, sleepy, scared, we talked about that last week, being scared, what we're afraid of, and happy, and then confused, sometimes we just don't know what's going on or what to do. And that's confused. All of these are feelings that we have. And did you know that Jesus had these feelings too? Jesus understands because he's gone through all the things that we've been through. We're going to learn about Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. And if you have your Bibles, which I hope you do, I want you to go to the Gospels, to, to John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. That's the last book in the Gospels. There are four. And go to John chapter 11, and look how many verses we're going to go through. 1 through 46. That's a lot of verses. So I hope you're ready. Here are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The Gospels, the good news of Christ. We're going to be studying those, especially John chapter 11. And let's sing the New Testament books together. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Acts and the letters to the Romans. First and second Corinthians. Galatians and Ephesians. Philippians, Colossians. First and second Thessalonians. First and second Timothy. Titus and Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. I hope you sang those with me and don't forget about those Old Testament books. The memory verse this week is from the book of John, verse 11, uh, chapter 11 and verse 25. Here it says, I am the resurrection, and this is Jesus talking. I am the resurrection and the life. What does he mean that? Resurrection and the life. Jesus is the one who gives us life after we die. He can raise us from the dead. God can raise us from the dead. Jesus can raise us from the dead. And he who believes in me Though he may die, here's the resurrection, he shall live. John eleven twenty five. Let's say that together with me one more time. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. John eleven twenty five. Remember that verse, study it, and say it to your parents and to your teachers at in Bible class. Here we see last week's story, and it's another miracle. We're studying the miracles of Jesus. Jesus commanded, another word for command is he ordered the storm to be still. Remember, 
the disciples were scared and Jesus was sleeping. And even though they had Jesus in the boat with them, they were still scared. They shouldn't have been scared. They had the Son of God with them. His disciples now knew he had power over the winds and the sea because Jesus said, Peace be still. And immediately, the wind, the rain, and the water, which was covering the boat, it stopped and everything was calm, peaceful. Everything was still. Jesus had power over nature, over the wind, the sea, the rain. He had power over all that. Now, the disciples knew that he had power to heal people because that's what he's been doing. Also, he had power to change the water into the uh, juice of the grape. He had that power. And he had power to make evil spirits come out of people. He had all kinds of power over everything, and he showed that. And today, we're going to learn he has power power over death. Here we have some very special people to Jesus. Now Jesus was traveling. He was going from place to place, really no home. But he would stay with some friends. And they were special friends that he would stay with and he loved them dearly. And they were Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. That was a brother and sisters. It was Lazarus was the brother. Mary and Martha were the sisters. And they were special friends of Jesus. And Jesus would go there, stay there, eat meals with them, and spend time with them in their home. Mary is the one that right before Jesus' death anointed his feet or poured expensive perfume on his feet, preparing for his burial, and rubbed it with her hair. So that's who that Mary is. That's the same Mary that is a sister to Lazarus and Martha. Now, a certain man was sick. We read that in verse 1 of chapter 11. Lazarus of Bethany. They lived in this town. Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary who anointed, and remember that anointed, what it, what it is, is simply he rubbed with oil. The, she rubbed oil on Jesus' feet with her hair. The Lord with fragrant oil. Now, fragrant means pleasant or sweet smelling. It really smells good. And wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother, Lazarus, was sick. Now, John is telling us who the, these people are. These are Lazarus of Bethany, his two sisters, Mary and Martha. And it was Mary who anointed, rubbed the Lord's feet with that fragrant, good-smelling oil and wiped it with her hair. And the brother was sick. This is Lazarus. Now that was later on that she did this. Rubbed the, his hair with oil. That was right before his death. But we're learning who these people are. They're special friends of Jesus. And they lived in that town of Bethany, which is a very small village. It's a very small town. About two miles east of Jerusalem, near the Mount of Olives. Now you've heard about the Mount of Olives. And here you see it today. This is Bethany, and, and it's known by El Azaria. And that is the name of Bethany, Bethany today. And this location is said to be where the tomb of Lazarus was. They think it was. And people can go see it there today. This is where they think it is, but they don't know for sure. And here we see that Bethany and Jerusalem, very close together, only two miles apart. And this is the area that Jesus was teaching, right over here in this area. 
Therefore the sisters sent to him. Okay, sisters, who are we talking about? You said Mary and Martha, you're right. And they sent to him. Who are they who are they wanting to send this message to? Him, Jesus. And the messenger said, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. Well, who is he whom you love that is sick? If you said Lazarus, you're right. There's Bethany, and here's where Jesus is teaching. And he whom you love, that is Lazarus. And the messengers heard that he was sick, that Lazarus was sick, and he said to him, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Okay, it's not a sickness unto death, and that this and it was this was all things that are going to happen are for the glory of God, that the that God and the Son of God would be glorified. Now what is glorified? Glorified means to give honor or respect or praise to. When we glorify God, when we sing, we praise him. And we can glorify God when we speak of God by saying good things about him, telling other people about him, and never using God's name in an empty way. A lot of people will say, oh God, don't, and say it just Say it when something goes wrong. We should never do that. That's not bringing glory to God. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. He, he loved them. He spent so much time there. They were so good to him. So when he heard that he was sick, now who was he? Lazarus. He stayed two more days. Now, who's the he staying two more days? Well, that's Jesus. So he's staying in that area where he was teaching two more days. John eleven four. So it doesn't sound like he's too worried about Lazarus. And he said that the sickness is not unto death. So maybe he's going to get well. Then after this, he said to his disciples, after two days, so he said to his disciples this, let us go to Judea again. See, they had just come from there, and he had been in the temple there, and he had been talking to the Pharisees, the scribes, and he had been talking about the Old Testament, talking about Abraham, and he told them something that they didn't like. He said, before Abraham, I was. And they said, how can this be? You're not even 50 years old. He was telling them he's the son of God. He was from the beginning, before the beginning. In creation, he was. And he came to earth as a baby. But before he was a baby, he was. And they didn't like what he was saying. He also, when he left the temple, healed a blind man on a Sabbath. And they really didn't like that either. And they were ready to stone him. And look what the disciples say to him. Disciples or followers of Jesus said to him, Rabbi. Now, Rabbi is simply teacher. It's a Jewish word meaning teacher. Lately, the Jews have sought to stone you. You know, you didn't make them happy when you were in Jerusalem and they were ready to kill you. Are you going there again? John eleven seven through 8. Do you see that in your Bibles? He said, are you going there again? So here you see that Bethany is in Judea and he was over here teaching and he said you're going to go back over to this area they're going to get you Jesus well 
Jesus told his disciples that Lazarus was sleeping and he needed to go and wake him up. Well, you know, when you're sick, sleeping's good. It helps you to get better. It, it will, you rest your body and it heals. That's good for you. And the disciples thought if he was sleeping, well, then he's going to get well, Jesus. We really don't need for you to go over there because they're going to stone you over there. But then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. But Jesus said, you're going to wake him up? He's dead and you're going to wake him up? They're going to find out that Jesus not only has power over the wind and the waves and the rain and over healing, over evil spirits, he has power over death. Jesus said he was glad he wasn't there when Lazarus died so that his disciples would believe. Now here we find the purpose of the miracles. Why did Jesus perform miracles? It's to prove that he's the son of God, to help them to believe. Well, he goes to Bethany and he finds the sisters and he found that he had already been in the tomb, he being Lazarus, for four days. That's a long time. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. We've learned that. It was very close by. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary and they were coming comforting them. They were, you know what comfort is? If your mom and dad are comforting you, they're making you feel better. Let's say you're sick. They may bring you some soup and get let you put a warm fuzzy blanket on and a pillow under your head and they may pat you they're, and, and they're trying to make you better. Comfort is to give you the things you need to make you better to help you feel better. Well, these Jews had come from around, probably some from Jerusalem, had come to comfort them, to make them feel better. You know, that was what they did back there. For seven days after someone had died, they people would come around and consult, comfort them, make, try to make them feel better. And you know, we do that today. We'll take food, we'll go visit, send cards, we want to help those that have lost a loved one to feel better. And that's what they were doing there. Well, Jesus and meets Martha. And Martha tells, tells Jesus, If you had been there, Lazarus would not have died. Jesus, if you had only been here. Martha also said to, that Jesus would ask of God and he would give him whatever she knew that he was the son of God. And she knew that Jesus could do anything. And Jesus said that Lazarus would rise again. Well, Martha immediately thought, well, you know that all of us, once we die, we will rise again in the resurrection and if we have done what we are supposed to do, do, if we have obeyed God and followed Jesus in his steps and lived the life that Jesus wants us to do, we will go to heaven and live with God and Jesus forevermore. But Jesus wasn't talking about that resurrection, was he? He was talking about what he was about to do at that moment, Martha believed that Jesus was the Son of God. And her faith is even going to be increased. It's going to be more and more. And I know that his disciples believed that he was the Son of God. But their faith is going to be stronger from what Jesus is about to do. Now, where's Mary? Well, Mary came. And she fell at Jesus' feet and said, 
If you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. And when Jesus saw her, and the Jews were crying, he was so sad. Everybody was crying. It made him feel so sad because he can feel our pain. When we're sad, when we've lost a loved one, you know who cares? Jesus cares. We can talk to God. He can help us. He can comfort us. And when Jesus was taken to the tomb or the grave, now the tomb is a big cave where they put the dead bodies. They wouldn't, you know, sometimes they would bury in the ground, but most of the time they would put them in a tomb, in a rock area that has a cave, and you'd put the body in there. Well, when they took him to Lazarus' tomb, he cried. Now, this is the shortest verse in the Bible. Matthew, John eleven thirty five. Jesus wept. That means he cried. He was sharing in Mary and Martha's sorrow, understanding their pain. He cared for them. He was comforting them. When he cries with them and they know he cared, that he, Jesus cares. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Well, take away the stone, he meant for them to move this stone away from the door of the tomb. Now, that is a big stone. It would take some pretty strong men to move that away. Martha, the sister of him, Lazarus, who was dead, said to him, Jesus, Lord, by this time, there's a stench. Now, boys and girls, what's a stench? Well, a stench is something that smells awful. I don't know if you've ever been going down a road in a car, and all of a sudden, you see something dead on the road that has been hit, and it has stayed there for several days. Oh, it smells awful. Things start to decay. You know, our body goes back to the dust of the earth. You know, we were made from the dust of the earth and our bodies go back to that. Well, during that decaying process, it will smell. There's a stench, a terrible smell. For he had been dead four days. Well, the men rolled away the tomb from the place where the dead man was lying. John 11, 41. Do you see that in your Bible? They rolled away that stone. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes. So he looked up to the heavens and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. That's faith. You know, we need to pray believing and asking, thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. That's what Jesus said. Thank you. You have heard me. He believes. God hears him. And I know that you always hear me. God always hears us. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe. Now, what is the purpose of his miracle? Why did Jesus perform? So that they would believe that he's the son of God. And that he would, they would believe the words that he spoke and believe that you sent me. Now, when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice and said, Lazarus, come forth. Do you see that in your Bibles? John 11, 41 through 43. He said, Lazarus, come forth with a loud voice. Now, come forth means simply come out. And he who had died, who's the one who had died? What is his name? Lazarus, that's right, came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Now, when a person died back then, 
They would wash their bodies and they'd put these strips of linen cloth and wrap them and put spices on them all over their body and wrap them with this cloth, this linen cloth called grave clothes. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, loose him, take away those grave clothes and let him go because He is not dead anymore, is he? Remember what Jesus said? He says, I'm going to wake him. And he did. He brought him forth from the grave. Now, loosen means to take off those strips of burial clothes. Now, you would think everybody would be rejoicing and happy And then knowing that Jesus is the Son of God because, wow, what a miracle he performed. He raised somebody from the dead that had been dead, not just a few minutes, boys and girls. He had been dead four days and was stinking in the grave. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen the things Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Now, John 11, 45 and 46. You know how some of those Pharisees were feeling in Jerusalem after he had told them that before Abraham was, I am. I was there before Abraham was even born. Well, they didn't want to hear that he was the Son of God. They didn't want to see him do a miracle on the Sabbath, and they didn't want to see him raise anybody from the dead. They did not want to believe in Jesus, even though he performed a big miracle. He has power over all nature. He has power to heal people. He has power to drive out evil spirits. And now... He has raised someone from the dead, which helps me to know that someday that Jesus and God have the power to raise me from the dead. The Pharisees were Jewish leaders who wanted to get rid of Jesus. They wanted him dead. Now, this is a verse from 2 Corinthians 1, 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of all of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. We've talked about mercies. That's when you care, you love, and you forgive. And, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us. Now, what does it mean to comfort us? Comfort Remember, it's those actions, those words, the things we do to let people know we love them and care about them when they're not feeling well, when they've lost a loved one, who comforts us in our tribulation. Well, you can just think what tribulation is. What do you think tribulation is? If you thought it was trouble, you're right. It almost sounds like trouble. Tribulations and trouble sound a lot alike. It's problems that are hard to deal with. So this, that's trouble. He said, this God of mercy and God of comfort, who comforts us in our tribulation, in our troubles, that we may be able to comfort, let people know we care. And our actions show that. Those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Because we are comforted by God, we want to show others that comfort too. And point our way to God. And live our life the way Jesus wants us to live our lives. So that we can one day be resurrected and live with God forevermore. Here's a song I will love. It's called The Children's Savior. It's a really special song to me, and I thought it went with this lesson quite well. It goes like this. 
I know someone who watches over me all through the day. I know someone who cares for me in every single way. The shepherd who will help me if I ever go astray. He's the Lord and Jesus is his name. He's the children's savior. He's the children's friend. A very special person and his love will never end. He's a children's savior, he's a children's friend. He's the Lord and Jesus is his name. Whenever I am lonely or whenever I am sad, Jesus comes to cheer me up and make my heart so glad. He's got to be the nicest friend that I have ever had. He's the Lord and Jesus is his name. He's the children's savior, he's the children's friend, a very special person and his love will never end. He's the children's savior, he's the children's friend, he's the Lord and Jesus is his name. Goodbye boys and girls, hope to see you at Easter Meadows on Sunday at 9.15.